Let's do the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. President Mohamed Buhari has forwarded the names of seven ministerial nominees to the Nigerian Senate for screening and confirmation. In a letter read on the floor of the Senate by pres its president, Ahmed Lawan, uh, the starter plenary, the nominees include Henry Ike Chuku, Abia State, Umana Umana of Akwaibom State, Ekoma Joseph, Eboin State, and Umar Yakub uh, Kanu, among others. The nominees are to replace ministers in President Buhari's cabinet, who had resigned to contest for the presidential primaries of the All Progressive Congress, as well as other offices. We take a track down when we return would have Nika Gule, who joins us, a public affairs analyst, to share his thoughts on this issue. Stay with us. I have the honor to forward the underlisted ministerial nominees for confirmation by the Senate. One, Harry Ikechuku Iko, Abia State. Two, Umana Okon Umana Akwaibom State. Three Ekuman Kama Joseph Nkama Ebony State. Four Good luck Nana Opia Imo State. Five Umar Ibrahim Eliakub Kano State. Six, Ademola Adewole Adegorie, Ondo State. And seven, Odum Udi, River State. Copies of the curriculum vitae are attached here with. It is my hope that this exercise will receive the usual expeditious consideration of the distinguished members of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Well, we have honor to forward... Oh, you heard it from Ahmed Lawan, the Senate President. Uh, Nika Gule joins the conversation this morning, a public affairs analyst. Nika Gule, thank you so much for being part of uh, The Breakfast. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mercy. I'm happy to be here. That's all right. Uh, let's share your thoughts. Generally, what do you make of this scenario? Uh, you, you, you have members of the president's cabinet, and we understand that it took the president uh, almost six or s six months, you know, to come up with his ministers because he needed to be sure that he had to um, get, you know, the right persons. And, and then you also have these ministers who also will be nursing an ambition of becoming the president. They have to become a flag bearer of the party. Now... It, it, it is what it is, uh, as it should be stated. But what do you make of the entire scenario? These persons have actually resigned, and now you have new persons or, I mean, proposed persons who've been uh, were hoping that the Senate would actually give a nod to them and then they become ministers. Yes, so uh, the president, in nominating these ministers, and forwarding their names to the Senate for confirmation is exercising his constitu constitutional, he's exercising his constitutional responsibility of ensuring that the, the, the business of government in Nigeria is running. Uh, but you, you did make mention of the fact that it takes President Buhari an unusually long time to come up with ministerial list. Uh, if we go back to 2015, when the president was newly elected as, as Nigeria's president, I mean, you will expect that when someone is seeking office, like President Buhari, President Buhari sought office in 2003, 2007, 2011, and finally made it in 2015. When you seek office for so long a time, one will expect that you already have your agenda in your head, you already have an idea of those who can help you prosecute that agenda. And then the president was elected, I think, was it not in, in, in February 
of 2015 or March of 2015. And I think he was elected in March of 2015. He was actually elected on my birthday, the 28th of March. From March to April to May, when he took office, you expect that, okay, if Nigerians are giving me a job in March and I'm going to resume on the 29th of May, I have to use that March, I have to use that April and that May to get my team together so that on the day I will take my auto office on the 29th of May, I would already have known those who are going to help me in this governance process. And I will make known their names to the National Assembly so that they can begin the process of vetting and clearing them. But it took President Buhari six good months, like you have said, from May 29th, before he was able to nominate ministers in November of that 2015. So how is that uh, possible for someone who is ready to, to take office? You know, it shows clearly, this were, for me, these were the third test signs right at the beginning of Buhari's first term, that Buhari may not be ready to lead us. Because at the end of the day, when we waited for those six months, we were actually expecting that the president is actually going all over the world, scouting and evaluating Nigerians from all walks of life and experiences so that he will give us a cabinet that is actually novel, that is different from what we have always been seeing. And President Buhari took these six months from May 29th to announce a cabinet in November of people that we already know, they in gigas, they are Mechis, the usual politicians that were already on the scene, that we know them. So why would he have taken him so long to give us these same actors that we are already aware of, you know? So this, this for me, was a very bad start for President Buhari. And in fact, it was when I started to think that President Buhari may not be ready to lead Nigeria. He may not be ready. And then what happened thereafter is that President Buhari is the only president in Nigeria that does not do cabinet reshuffle. He doesn't do cabinet reshuffle. He doesn't sack ministers. You can do whatever you want to do, so long as he has given you uh, office. You can be assured that you can do your work till the end of the tenure. President Buhari is not going to touch you. Look at all the issues that we have had in Nigeria. And President Buhari hasn't called any minister, reprimanded any minister. The only ministers that leave President Buhari's cabinet are those who live on their own volition. Maybe like uh, Amina Mohammed, who went to the UN to take a job, you know, uh, the, the former minister of finance, who just resigned, you know, to maintain her own name. Uh, what's, what's her name now? I've forgotten her name, you know. That, that left because of the NYAC uh, scandal and all of that. And then the ones that just left recently to go and pursue their, their political ambitions. These are the only type of people that leave President Buhari's office. He never reshuffles cabinet, never sacks anybody. So for me, President Buhari has been doing a very bad job of managing the team that will help him to deliver good governance. And no wonder uh, we cannot say that our lives are better today than they were uh, seven years ago when Buhari became our president. All right. Um, let's also um, stay with the fact that um, uh, we're talking about continuity. Now, we're taught in elementary government that one of the characteristics of government is continuity. And so you have less than one year uh, to go. It's not up to you. What happens when you have some ministers? For instance, a lot of persons have projected the likes of Rotimi Amechi as a minister of transport, and that he has been able to achieve in that you know, uh, time frame that he has. I mean, we're just looking at the time frame now. What happens with continuity with the replacement of this well, minister? Uh, yes, so uh, there should be no gap. You know, because as it, as it is said, nature abhors a uh, vacuum. And for continuity of governance, when these ministers left office to pursue their political ambitions, their permanent secretary started to act as ministers. And now the president has nominated substantive ministers to replace them. 
So that continuity is there. But the issue we've always been talking about is the quickness with which the president is acting in terms of nominating these ministers. And then you, you talk about uh, specifically someone like uh, Rotimi Amechi, and you talk about the fact that uh, he's noted to have delivered good governance. People like Rotimi Amechi, I will, I will give him like 20% uh, performance. I mean, what, 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 uh, what, what has he delivered? When you talk about the, the Abuja Kano uh, rail line, you talk about the Ibadan uh, Lagos uh, rail line, is that the only thing that someone will use seven years to deliver? I mean, Nigeria by now, we should have in Abuja where I'm speaking to you now from. I should be able to, from this Abuja, take a train and travel to any of the 36 capitals of Nigeria. And if Ruti Miyamechi, within seven years, was able to deliver me traveling to at least four, five state capitals, six, possibly 10, I can be saying, Seven years is not a, a small is a it's not a small time. A, a, a man who is seventy years old, seven years is ten percent of his entire lifespan, and you waste it. And we are we are talking about uh, uh, Abuja, Kaduna, Lagos, Ibadan, which are real projects that were already there. They were already in progress when he took office as minister. And the reason why Ruti Miyamechi failed in his office as Minister of Transportation is that, it is this holding onto everything like a baby by government. We are now living in the 21st century where economies are no longer run by government business. Economies are run by the private sector. There are individuals, the, 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 the Jeff Bezos, the, the, uh, the, the Bill Gates, you know, of this world. Uh, what's this man's name uh, in Twitter? Uh, Tesla man, you know? These people have more money than the federal government of Nigeria. The federal government of Nigeria's annual budget is $30 billion. And, and Microsoft is a company that is delivering $300 uh, billion of revenue every year, 10% more than what Nigeria is doing. So at the end of the day, people like Rotimi and Mechi should have gone beyond the usual government quoting, holding onto this thing and release the race sector now into the private sector. Imagine if you release the race sector into the private sector in a very transparent and honest process. Uh, they would have got enough capital because global capital is floating around the world and it would have made a landfall in Nigeria. And today we'll be talking about, you can travel from Calabar to Meduguri, from Lagos to Sokoto, from, uh, from uh, Enugu to, to Kano, to Meduguri on trains. And that could have been possible to happen in several years. So these guys just come, they deliver mediocre performance, and then they will be, 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 be punching their chest and saying, I have delivered this and that. You use seven years to do nothing, as far as I'm concerned, if we specifically talk about me, Rotimi and Mechi. And that has been the case with the other uh, ministers as well. Imagine that President Buhari took office in 2019. And electricity was at three gigawatts. Three gigawatts, that is 3,000 megawatts in 2015. In 2022, seven years later, Nigeria's electricity still remains 3,000 megawatts with more frequent collapse of the national grid. And so somebody tells me that the Minister of Power and the President, who is his boss, are performing. How can they be performing when we can use that seven? years and shut down the gas that we are flaring and channel that gas into turbines and Nigeria would have increased power output now from that 3,000 to perhaps 10, 15, 20,000 megawatts. It's doable. Turbines are there off the shelf for you to buy them. So this is the problem and people don't realize that this economy will never do well if you don't give it blood and the blood of every economy is electricity. So my rating of the ministers and their boss, the president, is no more than 20%, my say, unfortunately. So, so but let's also, uh, I mean, take a look at uh, the candidates that's been nominated for screening.
and looking at their portfolio and their capacity to perform. I mean, do you see them, any of them? Do you, do you think that they have what it takes to lead Nigeria or shift us a bit? <laughs> we, we don't have so much time. But do you see them with that capacity, uh, you know, to move the country to another level? Maybe for, for a second. Yeah. Yes, they, they, they have the capacity. I, I've taken a look at all seven candidates. They have either had uh, positions of um, commissioners or they have been at the National Assembly or they have been appointed to one board or the other. So in terms of administrative capacity, that should give them the experience that they need. But the point is that capacity aside, their own boss, the president, needs to give them the correct leadership that will enable them to deliver. I mean, if you look at the uh, Minister of, uh, of State for Petroleum, in 2015, they took office with four refineries dead. In 2022, seven years later, four refineries are dead. And Nigeria continued to suffer from uh, fuel scarcity, sleeping on the queue, looking for petrol, something that we are one of the world's largest producers. This is very shameful. So the president needed to call the Minister of uh, Petrol, of State for Petroleum and say, my friend, Within one year, I don't want to hear fuel importation in Nigeria again. And if he doesn't deliver it in that one year, you sack him. That is what leadership is about. And President Buhari is not providing leadership no, to his no, ministers. No, no, no. But Nika Gule, I mean, when you say that, the president should say to his minister, we don't want to hear about fuel importation. You know, we have uh, refineries that are not functional. I mean, do you think that the, the, the minister can actually act independent of the president in that capacity, in that regard. Uh, we're talking about the refineries yes. now because majorly with all of the uh, back and forth that we're faced with, fuel scarcity, uh, price hike, what have you, subsidy or no subsidy, it's hinged on the, in, on the fact that we don't, have, we don't have the capacity to refine our products. We have the capacity to refine our products. Nigeria so so if you have the capacity speed. to refine, why are you not refining? Do you call that capacity? Yeah. Exactly. So the, your question is apt. Why are we not refining, despite the fact that we have four refineries that can refine 400,000 barrels per day? The answer is leadership. If the president, on assuming office, told the Minister of State for Petroleum that within one year, I want all our refineries to work, and gave support to that minister by approving his budget, uh, approving all his proposals, and getting the right people to come and, and, and repair these refineries, or better still, selling off these refineries and, or leasing them out to global operators who would have brought in their money, their expertise, and their technology, and sorted these refineries. Nigerians will not be sleeping on the queue today. Because of petrol is very shameful that a country that is one of the world's largest producers of crude oil, the citizens cannot even see petrol. The citizens are buying diesel at 850 naira. When Buhari took off it, diesel was 200 naira a liter. Now it's 850. And this, this thing continues and the president is sitting there looking as if nothing is happening wrong in this economy. And that is why I put it back on his table. You should not just tell the ministers, you should give them the support to do it. And if they are not doing it despite all the support, you should sack them. We should learn to wake up in the morning and say, the president has sacked a minister because he has failed to perform. The other ministers will sit up. But the president who is acting as if he is he, absent, he doesn't even know in the nation. Nigerians are suffering insecurity. Nigerians are suffering electricity, suffering petrol, suffering price increases suffering healthcare, care education students are at home and the president doesn't just seem to respond to these issues so without leadership how can the ministers do it but but uh, i understand where you're coming from but the question is will the ministers provide the leadership or is the president that would provide the lead because i mean you're talking about the president here right and he has ministers w what can these ministers really do we understand that they have, uh, you know, a duty to perform. But if you have the president, who's the president, who doesn't really align, you know, with the thoughts of these ministers, what then can become, you know, a thing? Can this, 
you know, ministers act independent of the president and provide leadership that, that we desire. So the country that we have now, we have a country, 36 states, including the FCT 37, and we have different ministries. Are you saying that um, these ministers are responsible for where these different sectors are? Or is it a function of the head? The ministers were not elected by Nigerians. It is the president who was given the mandate to lead us. The president brings in the ministers to help him perform his duty as the president of Nigeria. And so whatever the ministers are doing, they are doing it in the name of the president. And if the president does not like what the ministers are doing, it behoves on the president to take action against the minister. So if Nigeria is not working well, we cannot place the burden on the doorsteps of the ministers. We have to place the burden on the table of the president because that's where the buck stops. A president that is up and alive to his responsibilities so should see the problems in the country. He has to be aware that students, university students are at home. And that should occupy his day. He should begin his day by inviting the Minister of Education and say, why are students still at home? I want students to go back. Tell me what it, it requires to send students back home. And the minister will simply tell him that Asu is looking for 200 uh, billion uh, naira to go back to the classroom. And the president should look for the money and give to, to the minister to give to Asu because this is the same president who is approving 4 trillion naira, 4 trillion. Look, there are, there are 200 billion. There are five of them in a trillion. And this president is approved 4 trillion. Now they're talking about 6 trillion to go and, and, and pay petrol subsidies. Something he should have solved if he got the four refineries working. If he got the four refineries working, the four trillion that he's now wasting on petrol subsidies would have been used to give ASU money, healthcare money, rose money, you know, uh, education, all sorts of things the president could have done. So you can see we have a president who doesn't even know what the problems are and how he can go about solving them. Because if he solved the refinery issue, he would have automatically solved the petrol subsidy issue. That is now chopping four trillion of money when ASU are on strike for only two hundred billion. So the book stops at the president's table. That's simple. Well, um, um, quickly as as we call it down now, do you see um, the Senate actually giving a nod? screening in terms of screening now because they have to go through that process and you also need to look at the time because uh, there's an office that's vacant and it needs to be occupied and the, the you know politics and governance need to continue so do you see the senate uh, giving a nod to these persons who've been nominated I, I don't see the reason why the senate will not give the nod uh, because first and foremost this Senate has never said no to President Buhari. Uh, and we know because the two leaders of the national, uh, the, the two chambers of the National Assembly, the president wanted to install them in 2015 before the, before the PDP did a parallel school and usurped them. So in 2019, they succeeded in putting these same two people as leaders of the National Assembly. These people have acted in the last three years since they took office as senior special assistants to the president. You know, the president has, has carried out impeachable offenses. The president has ignored them. The president has done anything he wanted to do. And these, these two people have not got the National Assembly to bite, to carry out his constitutional office of checkmating the executive arm of government. So I see no risk at all of they not approving these people, except probably it touches on their own personal thing. If it touches on them personally, like we saw in the electoral bill, which they passed and discovered later to their charging that they removed themselves as statutory delegates out of the, the, the electoral bill, this same National Assembly went back to the chamber. Within one day, one day, they passed the, 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 uh, the, the amended electoral law, I mean bill, and sent it to the president. Um, and, and the president just ignored them. He routinely just ignored them. That is how they were not part of the delegates that were voting. So when it touches on them personally, they do it quickly. But if it doesn't touch on them, 
uh, well, uh, you know, they, they, they are not bothered. They are not bothered. Nigerians are in forest. As we speak, mercy, as we speak now, you, you were talking about the rains before we started the program. Those rains are falling on Nigeria who are in forest in the territory of Nigeria. And nobody is going for them. And we have a national assembly that cannot ask the president, why are you commander in chief? And Nigerians are in forest under the rainfall in, in their own country and nobody is going for them. Then what are you commanding for? Are you commanding for, for, for what? Are you commanding for, 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 for cockroaches or, or what? If you are commanding for Nigerians, you should go to the aid of those Nigerians. We have the likes of Israel. They, they kidnapped Israelis and took them to, to Uganda in Entebbe. And Israel left Tel Aviv thousands of miles and went to Entebbe and went, went and released their, their citizens. We have Nigerian citizens in forest here in Kaduna, everywhere Zamfara. And we have a, a chief of defense staff, as we speak, that chief of defense staff is sitting in his office with ranks on his shoulders. And Nigerians are in the rain, in this forest, pregnant woman delivered a new baby in but, that forest. She's still but, there. But, 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 I mean, I know we're digressing a bit. Uh, the president has given an order. He's very, very clear with that directive that he's given. And he's ordered this person to go ahead and ensure that those who have been kidnapped, uh, rescued, you know, brought home uh, alive, you know, safe and alive. That's the instruction from the president. So uh, I, I don't know any reason why this, this persons have no reason. We're talking about the security personnel not having any reason to act swiftly and ensure that the order of the president is respected. Apparently, waiting for the president to give that order and instruction. Yeah, but uh, Messi, we are still speaking about the same thing because Nigeria has a minister of defense. So if we're talking about ministers, we are not speaking specifically about the ministry of defense, of which there's a minister, there's a minister of state. We're also talking about the service chiefs. We have a chief of defense staff and four service chiefs. We have an inspector general of police. We have DG of DSS. We have all this security across. And Nigerians are in the forest. Why is that the case? If the president has given an order, then the president as a former general knows that if you give an order, if a lieutenant, a lieutenant in the army, that is the one with two stars on his shoulder, gives an order to a second lieutenant, the one with one star on his shoulder. And that second lieutenant does not carry out that order. That lieutenant will punish that second lieutenant, which is the military. So how can you be commander in chief and you summon your service chiefs and give them order and they routinely, routinely ignore you and you are doing nothing about it as a former general? How is that possible? Well, Nick Agule, we need to take a break right now. And when we return, we'll continue with the conversation, but on a different, uh, you know, subject entirely. Thank you so much for being part of the show this morning.